Now, how did science become science? Medicine become a science? You know the story? Well, in Europe, modern, so-called modern medicine today started 5,000 years ago as mumbo jumbo, witchcraft and sorcery on the Nile Valley. It moved from there, went to Arabia. And one man who changed the course of so-called modern medicine today was Ibn Sina, who the American scholars Avicenna. Avicenna is not his name. He is Ibn Sina. And Ibn Sina had added a lot of sense into the so-called witchcraft of the modern medicine. Then it went to Greece. Greece, of course, it had the influence of Hippocrates and others in Greece. And from then it moved on. And in Europe, 12th century, all churches, most churches became universities overnight. That's why today the govern that you wear for the convocation, the vice chancellor, chancellor, deacon, rector, these are all church terminologies and they have nothing to do with, with education. They are ecumenical terminologies. So these universities accepted medicine as science. So one fine morning, you become science. You understand that? That's the definition. But surgery was not accepted as science. Up until 1572, when the Royal College of Surgeons of England started, they were called barber surgeons. Even today in the West, if you, when you pass your FRCS, you are not called a doctor, you are called mister. Or if you are a girl, you are called miss. And that continues even to this day because British are a great uh, tradition and that they, they believe in their tradition. So you are a barber surgeon. So surgery was not uh, uh, science at all. How did medicine become a science in America? Of course, these Europeans moved on to the New World when the New World was discovered, thanks to India, because Columbus went in search of Indian spices and lost his way and went somewhere and then got that beautiful land for them. So they should be eternally grateful to us for getting that beautiful land, large land, four times the mass of India and one-third the population of India. So they are they're really enjoying life at our cost. Because he said, yeah, that's why the Indians, Ameri Indians are called Indians. Because he said, ah, they're Indians. He was in Cuba. But he thought he was in probably Calicut. <laughs> that's the mistake he did. Now coming back to the modern medical evolution after that, America, there were 247 medical colleges around the turn of the last century. They were teaching everything, except Ayurveda, they were teaching everything. The so-called Western medicine, so-called, uh, you know, homeopathy, uh, radioesthesia, uh, chiropractice, osteopathy, and what have you. Now, there are three brilliant men who were very rich in America at that time. Nelson's Rockefeller Sr., J.B. Morgan, and uh, Andrew Carnegie. These are rich people. And when you are very rich, I, I have studied some of these rich people. When you are very rich, you want more power. You go after power. So they had a meeting together one day and said, look, each one of us fighting one another because we want to make more money. We will be rich. But we will not be powerful. So let's have a consortium. Three of us join together and we can control the world. So they joined together into a consortium and got a friend of theirs to advise them as to how to control the world. Of course, initially the advice given was, you fund the first world war, you will control the world. They did that. And when they found out after some time, 15 million white men were dead in the war. If Indians and Africans were dead, no, nobody would have bothered. So much so in England, no girl had a husband. That's why they were given to spinning. That's why it's called spinster. Because you don't have a husband, you start spinning. So they said 15,000 uh, uh, white men died and so many orphans without fathers and so many girls without husbands. So war is not the best thing to fund. Then they again called this friend, gave him some more money and said, get us a better way of doing. The man said, control education and you will control the world. That was a beautiful idea. And so they said, let's control medical education first. They were already funding 47 medical colleges in America at that time, the three of them together. And they were trying to get control over these, con having the board members in their, in, from their companies on the board. And they, in, they influenced the American president at that time, because, you know, American presidents were elected by these rich people only. Even today, American presidents are probably elected by the drug companies. In the olden days, oil companies. Today, oil, drug companies are three times more powerful than the oil companies. Their lobby is three times more. So they told the president, you would get these medical colleges examined to see which of them are scientific and which are not. So the president said, okay, go ahead. Then they said, whom to now have this commission to 
Thank you. They chose a man called Abraham Flexner, the very famous Flexner Report 2010, you must have all read. Abraham Flexner was a retired headmaster of Andrew Carnegie High School. What did he know about medicine? What did he know about science? What did he know about anything? Nothing. So the Flexner goes around 247 medical colleges in one year, comes out with a beautiful report which said, these 47 medical colleges which are doing chemical drug trials, because they all are from NAFTA, chemical derived now, they are scientific, rest of them are not scientific. So overnight this new system classification started. What did the government do? They didn't do anything. They had no reject reaction. They published this flexional report every day in the morning, front page of New York Times for one year. Naturally, the other colleges died a natural death. No student went to them. So from this 47, it became about 99 or so now. And all these are only chemical drug treating medical colleges. That is why Western medicine is chemical drug treating science. What is science truly? Mary Curie said, science is measurement, measurement is science. If that were so, you can't think. Can you think? Can you measure your thinking? No, no. So unscientific. Thinking is unscientific. <laughs> you love your boyfriend or a girlfriend. Can, do you? Can you measure love? Unscientific. <laughs> so what can, cannot be measured is unscientific. So science dies a natural death when measurement. This world cannot be measured by science. That's why we only know 5% of the world. Nuclear energy, gravitational energy and electromagnetic energy because they can be measured. 95% of the occult energy cannot be measured but that's the most powerful energy. I will very soon tell you what you can do with occult energy. We will come back to that. So, it became a science overnight and by the wrong route and this science has no meaning. So, they refined the diagnosis of science. They came changed. John von Neumann, a Hungarian chemist, Hungarian born ethnic chemist, American Nobel laureate who said, I quote, science is making models. Mark my words, science is making models, comma which are mathematical constructs, semicolon, which with verbal jargon are supposed to work full stop. Okay, keep the definition. Now modern medicine, so called scientific medicine we say, has a scientific base of linear mathematics or reductionist science which is not a holistic science. Now human body is not linear at all, it is a dynamic holistic system. Now, if you measure the human body linearly, what will happen? I will give you an example. When you go to a cardiologist, he will check you and say, oh, your ejection fraction is only 